Hi, and welcome to the Starting a Research Project workshop. In this workshop, we're going to set you up so you better understand what is expected of you. That way you can create a game plan and start your project for success. We're going to cover brainstorming and try to narrow it down to a research question. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is review the assignment. What are, is your instructor expecting from you? And it may be that the assignments are all tied together, so your instructor is chunking up the project into smaller pieces to help you be successful in creating that final product. So it's to your benefit to be aware of that now because if you're doing all sorts of other random projects that aren't co-related, co you could be making more work for yourself than it, that is not necessary. You'll also need to know how long the paper or presentation is because that's gonna be different. The whole project will be different if it's a three page paper versus a 10 to 15 page paper. There's a lot of a varying level of content that you can put together between a three page and a 10 page paper or a book. So that's really important so you understand the scope of it. You'll also need to know what the minimum number of sources are needed. That's just a, a, a set of ground rules. Like you cannot have less than this to be successful in creating a good research paper based on what your instructor is expecting. Not only that, but we always recommend that that minimum number needs to be tripled the amount. So if your instructor is saying you need 10 sources in your final project, you should have at least 30 sources because you never know where your final paper is going to lead and how it's going to flow. And so having more resources available to you as you're creating that paper will allow you greater flexibility in developing a really good argument. Another part of this is what specific type of sources is your instructor requiring? So for history, more than likely, you're gonna need a primary source. And the reason for that is your instructor is expecting you to interpret and analyze that primary source your, and create your own voice about it. And then use other secondary sources like scholarly articles to support your argument and develop it and move it into a deeper context. Maybe you need data sets or statistics in order to support your argument. There are certain things that will make your argument stronger that are certain types of information. So make sure you have a good understanding of what your instructor is expecting from that. The next thing is what format and citation style do you need to use? That could be MLA, APA, Chicago, or a specific other style for subject matter. The reason why we have these standards is so that everything is consistent. We have a baseline expectation of what we should be seeing in a paper, in a presentation, in your references or works cited. We don't want you submitting something that is so hard to read based on the font you use, or we can't find the source because you haven't given the correct citation style. All these structures, these building blocks are in place to kind of keep you in, in a good flow so that other people can reuse it and understand what you're doing. Also, citations are really important because you need to give credit to the person who had that idea or created something. And if you're not giving all the information, you could be missing out in really respecting that per person's information 
and that loses your own integrity in a project. It's also important to know the grading rubric for the assignments. And what I mean by that is how is how are you going to be graded? What elements are your instructors looking for that have more weight in the project than others? Maybe the writing isn't going to be the major focus because you're not in an English class, but instead uh, the analysis and the use of sources are going to be more important. And that's where you want to spend a lot of time. Not saying the writing isn't important, but it allows you to kind of see what is most important in this project. Do you really understand what is expected? If you don't, you need to ask. And the reason why all of this is important is because once you know what all is expected, what all the parameters are, what assignments are all connected to the final bit, you can create a really solid game plan that will allow you to plan ahead and be ready for every part of this project because it's a long marathon and you want to do it right without wasting time. So this is where you're going to go pull up your syllabus, pull up the assignments, find those rubrics. If you don't know, you better start creating a, an email to contact your instructor to get those answers. Fill out the worksheet so you have it all in one place. We'll be back with the next video.